Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams, uh, your instructor from the Fortinet classes, <clears throat> and as promised, this is an MP MPLS site-to-site -site VPN failover demo. So, uh, just a little explanation of what's happening here. Essentially, we have the situation where there's probably some site-to-site -site that's being connected through either MPLS or Layer 2 switching, or... Um, yeah, site to site, <laughs> MPLS. Sorry, guys, I'm recording this really, really early in the morning. And uh, both of these sites, site one and site two, both have internet connections. And wouldn't it be nice if the MPLS network went down, if we were able to have VPN tunnels temporarily shoot up and essentially build a tunnel to site two as needed? Then once the MPLS tunnel comes back up, right? It will go ahead and shut down the VPN and just use the better path. So that's what we're going to accomplish today. And I'm going to try to break this up in a couple of videos because I might not have time to do it all in one. Um, also, as a little bit of a bonus, <clears throat> during this first video, we have three circuits that have been delivered to our primary site, right, from three different ISPs. So we're going to set that up first in a in a load balancer configuration. So. Um, Let's go ahead and try that. And once again, I just kind of wing these these videos. So I'm just going to make sure that uh, my Fortinet is up and running and everything looks okay there. All right, looks good. And let's go ahead and log in to our FortiGate site one. So if you're in a situation where you are currently using internet connections and they're not load balanced together, <clears throat> I think the biggest challenge would be trying to get the original WAN interfaces off of the, the policies, out of the VPN tunnels, out of the, the virtual IP addresses, because you can't have it being referenced once you join it to the logical link load balancing uh, algorithm there. So this has been rebranded, by the way, to a um, uh, to a software to find WAN in the newer versions of 40 OS. So what I would do is I would come to the network interfaces and I would make sure that with your existing WAN ports, right, that you've cleared out all the references until you see zeros over here. So uh, if you don't have zeros over here, you can click that zero and you can jump to where they're being used and you're just going to temporarily going to have to uh, rename the port or take out that interface while you build the the link load balancer. So um, just to give you an example for my policy and objects for my internet connectivity, right? I had to go ahead and throw it on a temporary interface for my internet connection. See my internet access. Um, I just realized we're going to be using port 4 here too, so I'm going to have to probably use a different port for that. And this port's not used. I just took it off of the WAN 1, right, temporarily, and so I can set up my link load balancer, and then I'll put it back in. So, so that's step one. Step one is to make sure they're not being referenced, delete any VPN tunnels, any... Um, any VIPs, right, that might be referencing your WAN interfaces. So, and then step two is going to be uh, actually configuring the, here we go, the WAN link load balancing. So, right now, we have two circuits already defined. So, port one, right, we're going to enable it, and the default gateway is going to be 10 in this example. 10.200.1.254. Now, normally you'd get this from the, the internet service provider, right? But once we commit it, you can see it's now a part of the load balance. And we can do it for the second circuit. And this one's going to have a 10.200.2.254. Now, remember in class, whenever we use that 10.200, we make believe, right, that it's a public IP address. So, but it's really just acting as a little pseudo WAN connection here. And that's really a, a Linux router. So, um, but let's go ahead and, and add the third circuit because the third circuit, this, oh, there we go, NinjaCat just uh, 
just took over my screen. <laughs> like I said, guys, really early in the morning. I apologize. Um, but let's go ahead and add that port 4, right? So we have the circuit. We plugged it in from the, the D mark, right, into our FortiGate, gate. And we're going to go to our... Uh, where is it? Here we go. Interfaces. And I'm going to put the... And I didn't commit that. Cute. I'm going to set up that port 4 for my, my third link. So I'll call this WAN3. Alright. Then I'm going to take the... Oh, that was weird. There we go. Then I'm going to take the information that I get from my internet service provider. Right? Stick it in there. Probably leave the administration stuff off, right? I'm gonna hit OK, and now I'll be ready to drop into that WAN link load balancing. And the whole purpose of this is that it extracts the difficulty of uh, essentially maintaining a WAN interface independently using like a, a third-party appliance, like a, a, a load balancer. Um, everything can be done directly from the FortiGate. So I forgot to hit apply last time. That's awesome. So let's do that again. So um, 10.200.1.254. Oops, 254. There's one interface. And then port 2 is 10.200.2.254. There's port 3. Create new. I mean, how great is that? As we deliver circuits, as we remove circuits, right? It can all be abstracted into this one WAN link load balance interface. And it's going to be a 10.200.4.254. And then now you're, you'll see we have our three links being load balanced. Now we can essentially look at the traffic that's going through. But you see how they all say down here? Well, they're not they're not doing anything yet because we haven't configured them to a firewall policy. So let's go ahead and finish that real quickly. Then we'll shoot up some traffic and then we'll uh, play around with the link load balancing algorithms to see how we want to distribute the traffic. So uh, the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to still use the static routes, right, and give it a default gateway. That's my MPLS network, by the way. So, uh, but here we go. The gateway is going to be our WAN link load balance. We're going to hit OK. So it's now going to be acting as the default gateway. Cha-ching, right? In class, I tried to demo this, by the way, and it kept on giving me a weird error. I found out that's because once you have this WAN load balancing, you shouldn't really have any other default gateways defined in your static default gateways. So um, that's why it was airing out, by the way. So, all right. And then the next step is to get it onto our uh, firewall policy. So here we go. All right. And remember how we just temporarily switched this to a port that was not in use? Well, I'm now going to go back. I'm going to change it from port 5 to our WAN load balancer, right? Make sure NAT's turned on, any kind of profiles you want scanned. And for this example, just to show the distribution of traffic, let's go ahead and log temporarily all sessions. I'm going to hit OK. And let's go ahead and test it. Uh, well, there you go. Load it up Google. Hello, world. As you can see, we have internet access. So I'm just going to go to uh, makeinternetnoise.com to run a little script to just go to random websites so we can see that traffic flowing through. So um, if I go to my network and I go back to my WAN link load balancing, we should now be able to see our traffic dispersing. All right. Well, maybe. Do, 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 do. There we go. 
It's just I'm not generating a lot. So right now it's just doing source IP address, right? So anything with the source IP address is going to go down the same link. We can also distribute it by source destination. So um, the IP addresses get distributed a little bit more evenly. Um, sessions is where we can do the weights. Now what's neat about the weights is these are going to be ratios. So for every one, we can give two to port three, or we can give one back to port four. So we have a lot of control over here um, about the different ways that we can distribute the traffic. So just uh, I suggest playing around with which one you think would suit your needs. And maybe a little bit later on on the video, I'll show how to make some um, rules based off of the quality of the links too. So. Anyways, I know that was kind of a, a bad video. I'll probably record this again later on when I'm a little more well-rested next week, but I wanted to get this out um, before class ended for a particular participant. So uh, hopefully that helped. Uh, once again, too, now you'd have to go back, now that you have that one logical link and make your VPN tunnels again, uh, you would also have to do your VIPs, so your... your um, your destination natted IPs, your virtual IP addresses. But there you guys go. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do the MPLS failover and uh, and uh, set some weights, not some weights, some, um, <laughs> I'm never gonna do these videos again, so tired. Uh, set some um, health links on the line. So anyways, I hope that helped with the, with the load balancing though. If not, shoot me an email. And like I said, I'll probably get this re-recorded and uploaded. So, all right, thank you very much.